and happy Tuesday. We are back, a different artist and a different book, and I think this is going to be an exciting one with a fun um, activity following it. So we are going to read the story of Sonia Delaunay, A Life of Color, and you guys know I love color in my art room. I'm just going to take a little sip of my coffee. <sighs> Still working on that. All right, A Life of Color. So let's look at the cover of that by Kara Maines and illustrated by Fatina Ramos. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Now I'm ready. <laughs> All right, here we go. Charles was looking for his toy horse. He searched behind the chair, under the rug, and in every corner of his room. He reached in the back of his dresser's top drawer and found, tucked among his socks and trousers, a blanket made of fabric patches of many different colors. It looked familiar. It felt familiar. It even smelled familiar. But he could not remember why. Horse there. Whose blanket is this? Charles asked his mother, Sonia. Sonia was an artist. So was Charles's father, Robert, and many of their friends. It's yours, Sonia replied. I made it when you were just born to keep you warm in your cradle. It reminded me of the patchwork blankets that people made in Ukraine, the place where I was born, far from our home in Paris but your blanket is special. As I stitched together the little pieces of fabric, I could almost hear the colors singing. Charles pressed his ear to the blanket. Mama, you must have, been, you must have really good ears because I can't hear anything. Sonia thought for a minute. Your ears work just fine, but there are many different ways of listening. Quilts and all the patchwork colors. And this person isn't really there. It's like an image of mama making the quilt. While they talk about it and reminisce. Your blanket changed the way I thought about colors, Sonia said. When I listen to them, they tell me what to create. What do they tell you, mama? Sonia thought again. Why don't we look at the color? Why don't we let the colors speak for themselves? She took Charles by the hand. Come with me. While I shoo my cat away from the plants. Polly, get off the plant. Get down. Get down. Their car roared as it zoomed through the streets of Paris. Charles shrieked with delight as they barreled along faster and faster. Suddenly the car lifted into the air. This would be no ordinary trip. Over the noise of the engine, he yelled, where are we going? Close your eyes, Sonny advised, and follow the sounds of the color. Fun trip to me, flying car through patchworks of color. When Charles opened his eyes, he was surrounded by bright lights and music and people dancing. He couldn't help himself. He tapped his feet and clapped his hands. This is La Balle Bouillet, where your father and I dance the tango. I always wear a colorful dress, and your father wears a grass green jacket, a sky blue waistcoat, and ruby red socks. Papa sure can dance. So you can tell where Mama and Papa are because they're in a fancy dress and an emerald green jacket with some red socks. Looks like a lot of fun. I'm starting to see a connection to color here.
try to feel the colors and the music together, Sonia encouraged. When I painted La Balle Boulière, I tried, to, I tried to show everything, even things you might not think you can paint, such as the colors and sounds of movement. But I don't see Papa and you in the painting, said Charles. Painting of that sort of scene at the dance club where you just saw them. You don't need to see me, and you don't need to see Papa, or any of the other people either, in the painting, the colors. Colors are dancing. But Mama, don't worry about understanding it now. Let's go where the colors take us. Eyes closed. Let's get one more look at this painting. I feel like I can see figures in here dancing around. The sun was so bright that Charles could barely open his eyes. He felt his skin grow hot. He squinted and saw a busy marketplace full of fruits and vegetables. And he heard people speaking words he didn't understand. Are you still in Paris, Mama? Not anymore. I whisked you away to Portugal, to a town where your father and I lived when you were a baby. Another beautiful, colorful market scene. And again, just, I feel like I can see that connection to colors from the vegetables and the people and all the bright colors there in that Portuguese market. I would like to go to there. We loved to visit this market. The foods here are different from those we have at home, and so is the way the sunlight looks and feels. Sonia picked up a tomato. It was red and round. Look at how the light changes the color of the tomato from one side to the other. Charles saw that one half was brightened by the sun and the other half, in the shadow, was a deeper, darker shade. When I made this painting, I tried to capture all of the light, shapes, and colors of this busy place. Charles looked hard. The shapes fit together like a puzzle. One of them even looks like a hat. So this is the painting that, come on buddy, <laughs> cat driving me nuts this morning. This is the painting she did inspired by that market and it's almost like you could see the stands of fruits and vegetables and people around the market. Again, it's not very realistic, like you don't see a person the way a person looks in real life, but it's almost as if you can make out some figures. And we're off again. We have one last stop, Sonia said as they blasted off in their colorful car. They zipped through the air. Charles felt the wind on his cheek and watched the street lamps flicker in a city below. He saw bright colors in shop windows. He smelled bread from a bakery and he heard the whoosh of trains and other cars. All of his senses now swirled together. He was beginning to understand what his mother meant when she said she could hear colors and feel them. So again, patchwork colors of the building. I feel like I see that connection coming together. The sounds of the city and how it can inspire color. We've just arrived in Amsterdam, Sonia said, at a store that sells the fabrics I design. Ooh, here's the fabrics. Beautiful, colorful patchwork fabrics. Do you see, Charles, how we experience all of these lights and colors and shapes, sounds that surround us at the same time or simultaneously? I make designs for cars, furniture, and fabrics because besides being looked at, art can be driven, sat on, or worn. Art is all around us, always. I love it. I love it. It's a good fabric. Can you imagine wearing a poem or an idea, Sonia asked? In a pile of clothes, Charles spotted a pair of silk pajamas printed with one of Sonia's bright, bold designs. 
I want to wear an idea, he said. Can I try them on? Sorry. This is exciting. This is a good book. I don't know much about Sonia Delaney. Charles pulled on the pajamas. The smooth, soft fabric slid over his skin. He felt weightless as if he were floating. When he closed his eyes to think about all that he had heard, seen, touched, and smelled, he imagined a rainbow of colors singing and dancing. It's getting late, warned Sonia, and tomorrow is another day with even more to discover. But Mama, I'm not sleepy yet. I have so many colors and sounds and ideas in my head. Imagine the inspiration that might strike me as well after being surrounded by so much color and smells and wonders. I'm glad that the world has color to cover it and keep it warm, Charles murmured, murmured dreamily, like a blanket. Now you know exactly what I mean, said Sonia, and she tucked him in and kissed him goodnight. Can you imagine if the world weren't colorful as it is? The world needs art. They need people like you and me to create art and keep it colorful and inspire new design. And so that's the end of the story. And just like Sonia said in the story, art is everywhere. From your shoes, to your clothes, to your cars, that's all designed by artists windy, lots of wind chimes going on here today. So everything's designed by art. You need art in your life. Art adds culture, art adds color and life and happiness and joy. Otherwise we'd be in this dull gray and black and white boxed in world. So now I'm going to read to you um, a little bit of her bio in here, um, which is good for me, especially so I can throw in some photos. Kitty cat wants to hear it. And um, <laughs> you came to me. All right, Sonia Delaney. Sonia Delaney Turk was born Sarah Stern in 1885 in Gradzich, Ukraine. I have no idea how to pronounce that. I'm terribly sorry. She was raised in St. Petersburg, Russia, by the family of her uncle, Henry Turk, or Henri Turk, probably. After studying in Germany, she moved to Paris, France in 1905, where she met and married the artist Robert Delaunay. Together, and in a conversation with the artists, writers, and other thinkers who had gathered in that vibrant cultural center in the early 1910s, they proposed a bold idea for their art. Instead of depicting people, places, and things as they appeared in real life, the Delaunays were interested in reflecting the modern world by capturing its colors, shapes, sounds, and movements. This is my place. <laughs> to describe their experiments with color and form, they used the term simultanism. Simultanisme. Simul simultanism. They have it in parentheses. It looks like maybe the French word for it or something, but simultanism, like simultaneously. To express the idea that the bright, bold, contrasting colors of their compositions had a particular effect on each other when experienced at the same time. The poet Guillaume Apollinaire, a friend of the couple, called their project Orphism after the Greek mythological musician Orpheus because of the relationship between the sensory experiences of sight and sound in their artwork. Music played an important role in the Delaney, Delaney's look. In the Delaney, I can't talk now. In the Delaney's, I'll just go with that, lives. In fact, their son, Charles, born in 1911, grew up to become an expert in jazz music. Delaunay Turk believed that art touches all parts of our everyday um, experiences, from the clothes we wear to the objects we use. And in addition to paintings, she also designed and produced fabrics and other products until her death in 1979 at the age of 94. What a long, wonderful life she lived. 
So the um, pictures that uh, we saw were pictures of her artwork. Um, and we got to learn a little bit about what they were inspired for, about the market, about the dance club. One was the poem robe. And um, the very first one um, was just like electric prisms. So I hope you enjoyed that. And in a moment, I'm going to share with you my plan for um, what you can make inspired by the story. Okay, so I've got some music playing, and I'm probably going to speed up the video, but um, I have music playing for me to draw to, and I'm looking at pictures of a crowded beach because I imagine that to be really colorful with the umbrellas and the water and all the suits and everything, so that's going to be my inspiration as a crowded beach, and I'm listening to the Postal Service. I'm not sure if those two match up, but it's just what I was vibing on right now. So I am going to draw my beach image um, with kind of breaking it up into basic shapes and uh and uh yeah and then I'll uh, speed up that process so you can watch me do that oh and I'm not going to use rulers or anything I'm just going to freehand my shapes So the song that's on now, I have to make a little visual cue to stop here. The song that's on right now, um, it had to do with like shapes and colors and corresponding puzzle pieces, whatever, which feels so appropriate. So I knew there was a reason I chose this uh, band to listen to. So just to give you a breakdown of what I've done, this is sort of like the tide in the water. So that's what's happening here. And I'm gonna do those in watery colors. And then I've got these umbrella shapes overlapping. Um, so I'll color in everywhere they overlap. And now I'm kind of putting in these rectangular shapes that are supposed to look like towels or beach blankets. So I'm gonna put in a couple more of those and um, I'm not sure I want the figures in there, but uh, I'll see what, what strikes me. So speed it up again. I've decided I don't like this. I'm gonna get rid of that. But I've basically got what I want. So these are my beach towels. This is just the kind of background space, but could also look like poles of the umbrellas. These are the umbrellas. The circles are people. That's my beach line. So I think I'm actually just gonna kind of repeat that. All right. <laughs> I am ready for color. So I filled up my space completely of shapes. And I kind of like how it's really busy here and then your eyes are allowed to just rest down here. So I'm going to embrace that. Now, what I'm using are watercolor crayons because I love them and I haven't used them in a while. But you could use anything. You could use watercolor paint, crayons, markers. You could even build this up out of fabric. So I'm um, just going to start coloring and I'll probably speed through a lot of it and then I'll stop and slow down to show you how they work once you've done colored. Um, and I will say too, what I like about watercolor crayons is that um, I don't have to color too neatly with them because the, when you add the water, that's where the magic comes. Picking my watercolors. So I've colored my water and I have these um, 
brushes with water in them already. And I just have a paper towel off to the side. I really love these brushes. You just give them a gentle squeeze and they uh, add water. Um, so I'm gonna go in and do my lighter colors first. And all I gotta do is rub my wet brush on it and smooth out the color. And so that's why it doesn't really matter if I don't color in perfectly because the water smooths it out. So I will speed up this part, but I'm gonna go from the light colors to the dark colors. So, as you can see, this will take me some time, but that's basically my challenge to you. <clears throat> Turn the music down. I want you to think of a scenery that is colorful and that you enjoy and that you wish you could be in or around and break it into simple shapes. Think about the main elements, like for me, the towels, the umbrellas, the people, and the water. Break them into simple shapes so you're really simplifying it and just crowd the space with it. Leave no space white. Crowd it completely. And then I want you to add color. So however you do that, it could be through paint. If you have the same kind of materials as me, you're welcome to obviously do that. If you wanna kind of try to use my drawing for inspiration, you're welcome to steal my idea too. I'm okay with that. Um, but I want you to, you know, this is what, if, if you're choosing to do the video lesson, this is your inspiration um, to make a colorful scene. And listen to music while you do it. Listen to some of your favorite music because it just really inspires you as you're working and painting. Um, you just feel the vibe and you get happy, happy songs. Unless you're going for something moody. <laughs> but um, I'll uh, work on this for a little bit and then I'll try to post a picture of it completed. All right. Um, yeah, see? Yes.